And uh, I'm going to take out my phone rather than using speaker, just in case that's creating some reverberation on my side. So um, why don't we go ahead and start? And Jeremy has graciously said that he would introduce all of the people that are in this picture. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yep. Yep. Yes. Very good. Okay. So starting with the left back. You'll see a, a very tall gentleman with a blue top. That's Dan Brandon from Nanslo, Nanslo Lab Director in Colorado. Uh, directly in front of him is John West from Pueblo Community College. Uh, directly to his left is Lori Cook from Kodiak. In front of Lori is Sue Schmidt. Then going left, you'll see Kristen Gru from Great Falls. You will see me smiling at very, very big, hearty smile as I tend to do. Uh, then to my left from there is Lavona Tiska from Otero. Uh, immediately to her left would be Ann Siebert from LCCC. Behind her in red is Teresa Schaefer from Lake Area Tech. Behind her is Mundi Bersiaga from Red Rocks. To his left would be Christy Weitzel from Red Rocks. To the left would be Heather McKay and then from, from Rutgers. And then to the left of that would be Pat Schaefer from Mickey. Yay! Did I get it? Did I get them all? You, Two, four, you, six. You eight, did. Eight, well eight, done. Thirteen people. <laughs> that's that's when you ask an extrovert to do this work. <laughs> it's <laughs> wonderful. Right. If I find one, I'll let you know. <laughs> that's great. Um, why don't we go ahead and go around the room and introduce ourselves. And let's just start based on the participant list so we kind of have a sequence going here. So Jeremy, you want to start? Yeah. Um, my name is Jeremy Modis. I'm the data analyst for the grant. I am Sue Schmidt. I'm the Manzo Geo Project Coordinator with Wichi. And Anne, um, have you dialed in or are you using the microphone? I am possibly using the microphone. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, this is Ann Siebert from Laramie County Community College. Perfect, thanks. Kiriana? Uh, this is Kiriana Fritchie, and I am an administrative assistant for the Chiolianto project. And Christy Whitehill, I'm the career coach with Red Rocks Community College. Uh, I'm Joseph Rua. I'm a quantitative data analysis uh, person at Rutgers. I am Lavona Tiska, and I'm the career coach at Otero Junior College. I am Lori Cook. I am the career coach and adjunct faculty at Kodiak Community College. And I'm Maria Seat, and I'm the project director for the um, full consortium. Hi, and I'm, I'm Suzanne Michael. I'm part of the project team from uh, Rutgers University. And I'm Teresa Schaefer with Lake Area Tech in Watertown, South Dakota. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Well, I want to welcome you today to uh, this we we'll call it a webinar or webcast on um, providing open dialogue on the Career Coaches Data Collection Tool. I know that during the workshop we had a scheduled amount of time to have a conversation around the uh, spreadsheet and the data that are being collected in relationship to your positions. And um, I know that there was some feeling that you needed some more conversation around this. So today is that first opportunity to extend the conversation around the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and forward to the agenda and just kind of give you a, a quick synopsis of how, what we'll be covering today. Uh, first is we're going to provide you with some open forum time to just put out some questions before we actually uh, illustrate the changes and modifications that have happened to the spreadsheet. And next we're going to go ahead and Jeremy is going to do what we call an application share. So he's actually going to pull up the Excel spreadsheet that he had talked about and John had talked about at the workshop and talk about some of the things, the changes that have been made to that tool. We're also going to be talking about IR partnerships and data collection. 
and then we're going to open it again for other questions, comments, and issues that uh, you have in relationship to your role in the data collection process. So with that, I'm going to kind of just open it up for questions. Um, this is going to be an open forum, so if you are not posing a question, it would be helpful for you to mute your telephone. And then when you're ready to post that question, um, go ahead and unmute and go ahead. So I'm opening the forum now. Okay, so I haven't heard anything yet. So let me kind of pick on you, okay? And <laughs> I'm going to go down the list. And do you have any questions or comments in relationship to this? None being spoken. Uh, Christy, how about you? Do you have any comments at this point? Um, not yet. I just started with my. I started using it yesterday. The uh, I had my first class and getting data in actually yesterday and today. So I'm um, looking forward to see the improvements and what changes there might be. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Lavona. Um. Looks like she might be using the microphone. Lavona, uh, do you have any comments at this point? Okay, I'm going to move hey, on to I'm Lori. Sorry. Go ahead. This is Ann. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I can. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I was I was trying to talk earlier and it didn't work. So maybe Lavona, you and I are in the same position. But I just wanted to say I'm excited to find out what the what the modifications or changes are, and some of those kinds of things. So I don't have any big questions, just um, wanting to get those some of those kind of final wordings or I don't know what they're called, Jeremy, ticks or whatever that we do when we're putting entering the data in. Well, that's actually part of what we're going to talk about. That we've actually moved away from using delimiters as as our way of separating things out. So we we have to kind of do some different thinking, and I'll I'll talk extensively about that as we get rolling. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And just remember, if you are using your microphone, you would select the talk button in the audio and video box when you're ready to talk, and when you want to stop talking, you would click that again, and that mutes the microphone. So let me see. Um, I didn't hear anything from Lavona, so I'm going to assume that. She has no comments at this point. Again, you can also use the chat box down below. Um, Lori, do you have any comments that you want to share in the beginning of the session? I do not, Sue. I'm like everybody else looking forward to the final thing that I can start working with. Perfect. Thanks so much. And how about Teresa? Anything you want to share? Um, you know, nothing major. I've been working real close with my my lead on on this. And I just want to make sure that all the fields match up with the reporting that we have to do. Um, I think we discovered one. It really doesn't say if it's male or female, so maybe that's a new update too that that you've come across. But other than that, just kind of wanting to see what the new changes are. So thank you. Perfect. Okay. Well, then at this point, I am going to turn it over to Jeremy and to John, and they are going to do an application share. So, what's going to happen is a part of the a window that you're seeing is going to go away because they are actually going to show you the spreadsheet, and they're going to talk about the spreadsheet. So, with that, I'm going to mute and turn it over to them. Okay, so we 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 tried this a little bit earlier today to make sure that the technology would work. So. Hopefully that, that's exactly what happens here. So you guys should now be seeing my desktop. You should see Blackboard Collaborate and some of that sort of stuff. Is that what people are seeing? No, Jeremy. No, not yet. No. Yeah, no, I don't see anything. Not seeing anything yet? Nope. Okay. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> There it goes, Jeremy. All right, we're coming up.
What do we see? Excel, the Excel file. Wonderful. So you guys are seeing what is the code book. This should look pretty familiar to everyone, yes? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I, I've been advised by Sue wisely to uh, to kind of draw out my words and to move slowly on the screen so that way whenever I'm doing something, if it's something that is, you know, moving about fast, that you not, that I don't want anybody to get lost. So, so what what in, what changes did we make to give you a, a bit of background? Whenever we had gone over like the green field that was there to to capture narrative about what everybody was doing. There was some concern about possible loss of data or what if coaches didn't use the delimiters properly, all of that sort of thing. So we had to kind of go back to the drawing board after our rollout. So mainly there's that big improvement which I think, and I, I worked very closely with John about this, that whatever things we were doing that it was very coach friendly. So we think we have a way of doing that, and I'm going to kind of walk you through some of those those changes. Um, as far as what we're looking at right here in the code book, just about everything is the same. We're, there's not anything that's new. Um, Teresa, thank you for bringing up the point about gender. We can definitely add that in. Uh, that would probably go in our red fields. But to the, for the purpose that we're here today, um, some of the blue stuff has been rearranged. Uh, per Rutgers suggestion, just maybe to put you know some certain things together. This really n nothing new is here. In fact, actually one thing kind of fell out. Hey, um, when it comes, say again. Jeremy, one question: Can you make this a little bigger? You know, so your view is, um, yeah. So it's, yeah. So people how's can that? see. How's that for everyone? That's fine, but good. Much better. There, thanks. Okay, good, good deal. Yeah, I was kind of giving like bird's eye view, so apologize for that. Um, yeah, the the stuff that's in here is the stuff that we've already talked about. So again, again, nothing new there. Where the big changes come from are here in the green. There's a little bit of of new stuff in here, so just to kind of walk you all through it, you know, so. I, I mean, I'm even blanking on exactly the the order that we had: date, method, reason, content, all that sort of thing. Let me show. Let me rather instead of being here in the code book, let me just show you the actual demonstration. Remember this fake data that I had made? I'm going to zoom out from it. This could, it should look like that printout that I gave everyone. So the the blue columns have been reordered to kind of be slightly more friendly of the the types of stuff is a little bit more clustered. And now over here in the green area, which I'll zoom in on. So Jeremy, those of us who already have this before that, mm -hmm. it, does, how, do we have to go back and redo it? The, yeah, this is what I, I absolutely feared and was hoping to avoid, Lavona. There, we're going to have to massage whatever stuff you've gone ahead and started working with into this new thing where the columns are split out. So if I Gary already read. collected all of the data, our IR guy, are you resending no, 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 the new one so they could redo it or no no no. Well well essentially Lavona, whatever he sent you, you can just pop into this one as well. And I'll I'll go through how the the green section of this is changed to where you're you're not at any disadvantage. And we can always get together just between the two of us, and I'll go through more of this with you on detail. Does that work? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope that we've done our due diligence, you know, within the admin team and partnering with the evaluation team, that this should be the final moving forward version of this tool. So, so essentially what, what we've changed here is now instead of just one enormous cell, there's multiple cells for you to put your stuff into that's all lined out. So it's just like it's blue. Now the, the issue here, and this is where we had to do a little bit of interesting thinking, was well, what happens whenever you're you know, working with you know, a student, you've got to meet with them multiple times. How do you deal with 
multiple touches and it still work in this file. So again, you'll have to kind of work with me on how far back I zoom out so you can kind of see everything. So this is the, the solution that we had to we had to come up with. So let's just say that we have a, a given student over here. We're going to interact with fake student James Smith. And we have all of our information here on row two. Just so you guys can all be seeing the same thing, I'm going to highlight this person a different color. Let's make James this sage green color. So you're working with James and you have James in your office and you start filling out some of this information. Now this is not useful for us to really walk through all of what that would look like. I'm just on the mechanics section right now. So let's just say we have information in each one of these cells. I'm just copying it through. Make sense? Some some things that are that are helpful. I, I take it I kind of take to heart what I know in Excel, but I don't know what everyone else knows. Um, to, to help keep this thing readable, it needs to be wrapped text, and you can also size your columns. So if you notice how my arrow looks here, that it's black with a white trim. That's how you can highlight multiple columns. This will be really handy here in a moment. So if we highlight all of our green columns, and now you see how my cursor is this weird little two arrows and a line that goes through them, that's how you can size all columns at one time. So if I wanted to make them all narrow, I would do it like that. Or make them real wide like that. Jeremy, let me, Jeremy can I just add just a reminder to people Please, that um, Sue is recording this and so it will be available for your future reference. So don't feel like you have to write notes like crazy. It will be there for you. And right. so will and Jeremy and so will John. Yeah, I'm, I have open communication. I would love if you guys called me every day, maybe not every day, but call me and let me share what I know to help you do your jobs so I, things go the, the way that we need them to. So, so hopefully that little, little showing made some sense. So say the, let's just say hypothetically we've got a student, we've got information on that student. So it begs the question, what happens whenever you get to see James Smith another time? This is how we've decided to move forward with that. So say that you got James sitting across from you. You see how my arrow has changed again? That it's the black arrow with the white trim. If you highlight that, you'll see how it will highlight the entire row, the one that's beneath, all the way out into infinity. From here, you would go to this insert cells and click it. So what it's done is it's created a row right beneath where you are headed, if that makes sense. So now we've got James and we can put more information in. Is, that, is everybody still with me? Good, Jeremy. Doing good. Okay. So let's copy out information. Now this can happen ad infinitum. Say that James just keeps coming to the coach because he's, he's enjoying what information that he's getting from the coach and you've got to see him many, 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 many times. So let's just simulate he's visited a couple more times. So just even looking at this right here, I can tell that James Smith has been to the coach one, two, three, four, five, six times. And if you scroll over here, you would have information all in here. Now that's exactly what the data team wants. We want to be able to see all of this amazing stuff that coaches are doing with their people and it's all separated out nice and pretty. Would, would everybody kind of see how like that's where, where we're headed? So you, you would even be able to review your own case notes and it's all right there really at your fingertips. 
we all kind of on the same page in that thinking? Hey, Jeremy, quick question. When Please jump at me. Um, when they add additional rows, do they mm -hmm. need to copy the data about the person so that if there's ever a sort, that person's record stays together? Well, ideally, just so long as there's one thing that's carried through, it's, it will be completely protected. They don't need to because of how we're using the tool. They don't have to copy that stuff through. That's stuff that can be done on the back end. Alternatively, I mean, a very simple copy and paste, control C to control V. There's multiple ways of doing this. You know, copy and then paste. You can do it one at a time or do them all at once. Right. So I was thinking if they did want to replicate the columns, they could just um, co they could just hold all the columns across through the person's name. And then right. Copy that well, the there is but there are some things. Required. Right. You have to be wildly careful in how you do this. Copy paste is one thing. Carrying a formula, like if you look at how my cursor is right now, it's the white cross, and now it's the multi directional, and then there's one that's a black plus sign with a white. That one is not your friend in our case because of what it does with numbers. So if you notice there, it changed that CHEO cohort from 2014-10 through 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's not appropriate, right? Like that cohort, like it's Excel in, in all of its wisdom, in all of it that it tries to be helpful, can sometimes be too helpful and assume things that you don't want. So you have to be careful in how you're copying things around that it's not adding a number. So it's like same thing with student number here. That student number is 2561, the last four digits, not 2562, 63, 64, 65. So you have to be kind of careful about that element and you're not, you know, in unintentionally changing your numbers. So it's, it's kind of the same thing here with the ID number. You can't drag it through because then it will change that number. So when you're doing that, be careful about your copy paste. So again, this is one of those things I'm going to zoom way out for a moment. For, for coaches that are in smaller schools, we know where you're working with about 100 students. You figure if you're going to interact with each of those 100 students five times, that means you're going to have 500 rows to scroll through. And that can get kind of hard on your eyes. So the, the solution that we came up with is something that's within the data package that there's multiple ways to do it, but it's about the cleanest way that we can think of to where you can still be able to see all of your stuff, but you don't see all of it all the time. So this is where we get into the collapse function. So if we're, we're over here looking at our, our individual student again, James Smith. We've interacted with him a couple of times. There's a way to take all of this extra stuff, you know, so the rows three through seven, and hide them in a semi-automatic way. So this is how you would do it. Again, using the black arrow with the white trim, when you're highlighting different, the entire row, if you highlight all of your rows, come up here to data, look in your ribbon, and you'll see this group function. So group has a couple of different ways of getting to it. I love keyboard shortcuts. You might not. So here's how you would do it using the ribbon itself. You can either click here on the little arrow and it gives you options between group or auto outline. You would select group or just hit the picture. So the only thing that's changed right now is this thing right here. You use that button to close it. So now the stitch in report looks exactly the same as it always has with all of your stuff still there. But when you click on the plus over here, it will expand. And again to close. 
Everybody still with me? Yep, we're with you. All right. Good. It looks good. Okay, maybe I should just go on ahead and stop there and open it up to, to anybody that has any questions at this point. I don't have, this is Anne, I don't have a question now about how we are supposed to enter that data. I guess I might have the same question as Lavona might have later on of I've done probably just about 10 or more of our students. I did the old way. Um, so again, if we want to meet, a, if different, if we need mm -hmm. to meet a different time to figure out how to do that well instead of entering each one separately. But my other question is, did we ever add any um, other names or triggers for things, for like method of contact and some of that? Well, t tell you what, Anne. Let's 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 readdress that question once we get to more of the, the content of the report okay. as opposed to the mechanics. Like let me get through all of like the mechanics and some of that new thinking about like how to do what we're doing and then we'll look at the okay, code awesome. book here yep. after that. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks. Does that work? Perfect. Okay, so so with regards to mechanics only, we we have in we all still feeling pretty good about this. All right. I'm assuming everybody's good. So, um, Jeremy, I just wanted to share that do. you know, um, if you are uncomfortable getting back on the phone, and I understand that, you can also use the chat box and just say yes or whatever, so that we know that you're comfortable with us moving forward. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. I'll keep that window open so I can see those questions if they come through. Thank you, Sue. So. There's there's some pretty good advantages to how this thing will work for you. So that way you can keep all of your information, but you don't have to see all of it all the time. So you just can have your stuff and close it up whenever you're not done with it. So the next time that James comes in, you know, you would just highlight the row that's beneath where you want to go, insert a new row. You can copy down your ID number so that way it stays consistent, go on ahead and come over here and start typing your next information in. And so that's, Jeremy, that's the idea of how it would work. And my, is, it, is it right they really only need the ID number copied and not everything else, is that right? They don't need everything else. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, if, if one thing is in the row, it, it keeps it protected. Now, in, and that is a lot of, you know, the, the coach's preference because the, because of we're not sorting this file any longer, it can't get out of order. There's some diligence that needs to come from the coach that, you know, let's just say that you're meeting with Mary Johnson, you're meeting with Mary Johnson a second time. If you highlight Mary and you'll even see with the coloring here, it's going to continue to go with James's information. So you can kind of see here with our, our box that collapses, these little tiny dots, that's essentially saying that these dots all belong to this box. So if you're meaning to add stuff with Mary, you need to be clicking below. And then Mary's stuff, like to, you know, let's pretend that we've met with Mary four times for the initial and then three follow-ups, which is what those rows would represent. You would highlight them all, data, group. And now Mary has collapsed or expanded. And if coaches, I mean, if you want to go through and actually add a unique color, I guess you could do that if you like. You don't have to. Just whatever helps you keep everything separated works for me. Are there any other questions out there? Okay, assuming, ev assuming everybody's good. Um, this also is really handy when it comes to working with the blue columns. You don't need to see all those blue columns at all times. So you can use the same principle to group those and close those out as well. So we know here that L is the veterans indicator. So you have to excuse the fact that I have something out of order here in the, the fake data. If you highlight all of your blue columns, so L through 
through AB, you can group them too. And you'll see you have that bracket along with each of these little tiny dots. They're all grouped and can be closed or opened as you need them. So that way it kind of helps shrink the file so it's easier to see. Do you have a question? Very fancy, Jeremy. That, um, that makes really good sense to someone who is a non-Excel um, proficient user. So nice work on that, Rutgers. You guys too. Yeah, one, one thing that, that's handy here is that let's just say, like, you'll, you'll notice that you have these new boxes that have, you know, the, these plus minus collapsing tools in them. There's something that's kind of handy. When it comes to this one and this two, if you click on the one, it closes everything. If you click on the two, it expands everything. So that's one way that you can kind of just like at a glance be able to move in. So I would say, you know, one for unitary, two for split out. And you can use the same thing up top. So one means there's no blue. Two means the blue comes back in. So, so this is where we were kind of in that design question of what's going to be easiest for coaches and what's going to give us less heartburn when it comes to analysis. And it was either the delimiters or this. So this is where I worked really close with John and said, okay, what, what can coaches use? Like this is the tool that you're going to need. What, what do you think? So, and I partnered up with Rutgers, had discussion with them, and this is what we all came up with. So it's a, it's a little different in terms of what you're, you know, how you're recording it. You know, you're using some slightly fancier techniques with this grouping function. But it keeps all of your stuff nice and split up. So, you know, if it's, you're meeting with a student today and you meet with a student, you know, some number of days later, so on and so forth, we could just copy some fake information throughout here, right? You, it, it's split for you. You don't have to worry about, okay, now I've got to put a comma or a delimiter like the hyphen between, so method of interaction, email. It doesn't matter what you write now. Reason for meeting, initial, or whatever codes we, we, you know, fully agree upon to use. Then talk about what you did. Where did you send them afterwards? What, you know, sum it all up. Do you have any other, you know, observations? So it's, it, it essentially makes it easier for the coach to put their stuff in because they just type and move on. They don't have to worry about their, their syntactical formatting. And then, Again, bringing us all back to the grouping thing. When you're done working with the student, close them up, go on to the next thing. Or we can close them up here. So, so how, do, how are we feeling on the mechanics? Because if, if we're okay with mechanics, if there's no questions, or if it's one of those, let me kind of sit and think about it, we'll come back to this, you know, individually in another session, whatever. You know, I don't, I don't want to move on too quickly if people still have mechanics questions. Anything out there? I'm good. Still feeling pretty comfortable? And again, if you want to discuss this with me privately, phones are open in nine hours a day. So if we're, if we're good with the mechanics of this as we're kind of standing, now we can go to the content. So back to our code book. So if I can zoom out and you guys will recognize most of the stuff that we have in here as far as the various things that we were wanting to maybe code for and this can still change as well. But luckily we can, you can kind of do whatever, whenever, just so long as you get the right information in the right place, it's all good. So there's, there's a couple of, you know, new things. I know that we had date and the method, reason, content, and referral. So I'm just going to color these slightly different just so we can have it kind of stand out. Those were things that we were already ready for. The referral to coach is new. 
So we want to know like how did the how did the student even know that the coach existed? So for like Christy, I know that she actually went to a class so she can capture that. However, she feels is it in her native language to just say that. So like it even says here in the format, you know, narratives such as coach class presentation or an orientation packet, a faculty member told them, somebody from student services told them, just to kind of capture what that's all about. Like I said, all of these other things are we've we've already discussed this previously. You know, the date, method, reason, content, referral. Jeremy, can I just add something? This is Suzanne. Yeah, um, Suzanne, please. Yeah, um, just in terms of the reason for meeting, I'm not sure if all the students are mandated to see the coach. If they are, then we don't have to do it. But if they're different decisions at different schools, then it would be really important if the first meeting is mandated to indicate that it is mandated. Um, it may be the first initial and last meeting with that student. Um, another place the student may actually have been invited to meet with the coach because of a class presentation or referral, whatever. But we do want to capture the mandated versus the non-mandated. So in terms of the reason for meeting, if it's mandated and then the student has additional things put mandated and the additional things all under the reason for meeting. Okay, so you're saying to put it in this area. Exactly. Okay. So we can and I, I indicated that in under the format. It says, you note know, some students will be mandated to see the coach, and that may be the only reason. Um, other students will be mandated, and uh, but they have other reasons to come. Um, so we want to capture that. Let me just, uh, I don't know, it, um, you know, you can just um, email me or, or Jeremy, how many of you are mandated? And if, if everybody is mandated, then we can just you know, eliminate that. If there's a variation, then it would be really important for the schools that are mandated um, that we can identify them very easily. Well, maybe we can turn that over to the coaches right now. How many of you are mandated under your scope to have to meet with every student one time? Um, you can also put it in the chat box, and so we can capture that poll. Just if you are required or they are mandated, just type "mandated" in the chat window, and we'll see who the responder was. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks, Sue. Awesome. I wouldn't say this is Anne. I wouldn't say that I'm per se mandated um, as it's written down anywhere. But we are. But I, but I am that one who everyone sees for the application portion. So in that section, I would like to see something like application as an indicator of why they came to see me. Okay, yeah, that's, so. that's, 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 yeah, I mean, they're, they're, the reasons are going to vary greatly. And you know, there may be a student who actually comes to see you and you're not the right person for them to see. But that's even important because you're going to then refer them to whoever it is the right person. So if everyone in your school and um, has to see you for the application in a sense that is mandated, um, and the people who are writing that they're not quite sure, that would be something to find out from your project lead because that also makes a difference in terms of what the message is out to the students and what you should be expecting um, in terms of the student. Because if a, if a student is mandated and he or she does not show up, then there really has to be some active outreach. Okay, so I'm going to go on ahead and need to keep that that first field there, that referral to coach, and that we can put things in there around it's mandated because they had to fill out an application and they had to get it from me. Um, I think that Suzanne, and again, do you want? Are you comfortable with that being narrative in this field? Yeah. No, actually, um, well. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's raising an interesting question. Our referral to coach, if it's mandated, it could be there. Also, the reason for the student to come to the coach on the next column 
could be also mandated. So you may have it in two places. Um, but I think it's really critical that we know, particularly for the schools where it's not mandated, how students get to the coaches, because that's going to become, you know, an increasing institutional issue. Um, so it may show up both places. Um, so yes, I would keep it. You know, and over time we'll see what all of you are inserting in that column. And you know, we can then clarify and give you some more buzzwords. Um, but I don't want to superimpose anything in terms of what you're doing. I mean, Jeremy, this is Debbie. Hey, Debbie. For our quantitative analysis, we need to know if this coach's meeting is required by the, as part of the participation or is voluntary. Because we see differences in the outcomes based upon that. So they can enter a narrative or qualitative, but at the end of the day, mandate it, yes or no. Is that meeting with the coach compulsory? Because that may have something to do, that may be correlated to the influence the coach has with the student outcome. Okay. So from our so, end, we need to know that as well. Okay, so we can definitely put that right here. Of course, you'll have to forgive me that the formatting needs additional working. So what if we can call this anything, mandate, Y or N. Do we yep. feel comfortable with that? Yeah, yep. that's great. So I'll add that, adding that into the code book is kind of tricky because of that big field right there, but I'll get it added in. So we can go on ahead and just say that this will be a new thing. Let's code that something obvious. Okay, so mandate needs to be added to the green areas. Do we do we see anything else that we need to kind of make sure that we, we don't miss? I would like to see in the method area um, if you can add mail. That's that's in the coding piece of it, but um, the method of it is clear had I mail out pieces of information as well. And so I would guess that would count as a contact, right? I, you know, I think that that would. I mean, I hadn't really thought that that any of us were using postal mail, but sometimes we use Bob um, too in Wyoming yet. So maybe we could add postal mail via horse or. I mean. Yeah, no, I think that that's fine. You can put that in there that you had a. I sent out you know, mail to all of these students. That's totally fine. So that, that just now becomes one of the options which I will now highlight something you can read. Yeah, so that's added in. What else do we think out there? Like let's, like all good ideas, just throw them out there. Anything else? Hey Jeremy, it's Debbie again. Hey, um, just in terms, in terms of our due diligence, we just have to make sure that whether it's in the stuff, you know, the stitched in fields or the coach collects it, that every variable that we need to report on for the comparison cohort is included, right? We don't want to get to the end of this and find out that the colleges don't actually include the data or you know it's in the field but nobody collects it so students don't report it because then it will be incumbent upon the coach to ask for that. So I just think as we do our final due diligence we just want to look at the comparison cohort reporting and make sure we have all those fields available. What what is, do you, could you have can you speak to any of those fields from where well, they're being like well they're going to be TAA eligible, they're going to be Pell eligible. Uh, disability, veteran status, and a lot of it you have. But it's, as I as I sit here and think about it, I'm just and we're doing a comparison cohort now. I'm just really thinking, hey, we better pull the Fed table two for the second round and make sure we've got every variable in there. Right, right. No, I, I feel you. And there's also that additional stuff on the back end whenever it comes to you know, our interactions with the IR people independently of the coaches that, I mean, there's, and it's, it's even discussed here in the code book itself that some of the stuff in the blue cells might be captured by your IR people, 
it might not. Like there's some of it that I know is difficult to get to in the state of Colorado and some of it that isn't. And I know that some other colleges can very easily get access to financial aid information like Pell eligibility. So there's, you know, multiple ways to capture it. And, you know, as as I'm kind of looking here at at this, you know, at it, it, column T and column W, column U, that it should be able to get us some somewhere close to that answer with the coaches working with them. But I see I see where you're going with it that we don't want to have that headache, you know, later on down the road when it might be too late to try and capture that information. Yeah, it's we're doing we're doing that headache right now, so that's why all of a sudden it's top of mind to me. <laughs> for the TAA one round. So, I mean, a lot of these tools are in your registrar information, but, the, you know, school students don't report it, so typically it's not in the field care, but it's empty. So in those instances, and this might be just something we can query with the IR folks after the call journey, let's just make sure we can get, we have the data, and as you said, we can put it in the back end, and if those schools may be where it's missing, we can work with those coaches to add it. Yeah, I, I think that for, for some colleges it's going to look different than others. So especially for the colleges that have like the mandated, you have to meet with the coach to get the application, they've got them captive right there and can even ask them on the application, you know, did you get CAA funds, were you Pell eligible, that kind of stuff. I think in the larger schools we can definitely run into some issues that you are our data people on the admissions and record side of the house, like the true data that's out there, they just don't have it. We'll do the best that we can, but there's there's likely to be some amount of error in blank fields. And I think somebody has their, I'm getting a lot of reverb on someone. I have a okay. question here. Go ahead. Good. This is Anne, and I'm sorry, I'm all full of questions today. I'm thinking back to a yellow field, and I think we had this discussion when we were down in Denver. Um, the yellow field of student type. Sure. There was a discussion regarding if they're pre chio chio um, in a Nanslow or in a class of the Nanslow lab. Did that ever get resolved, mm -hmm. or what that decision was? Well, right. I think that that was still kind of up in the air. Now that you remind me, Anne, there's there's multiple ways of coding a student, and I think where where my my thinking is at is that we would be trying to figure out which courses are pre-chio courses, which ones are pre-chio courses that have a Nanslo lab in it. So, like here at at PCC, I know for this particular semester, all of our students will be, you know, that are in these biology classes, chemistry classes on other campuses as well, are taking like pre-CHEO classes that would track into a CHEO program, but we don't have the, the Nanslo this thing right there. So I can kind of lean on our people over at Rutgers, you know, do we want to be worrying about the Nanslo lab component? on the back end or on the front end here with the coaches? I think, um, and Suzanne can speak to this externally, that um, we've got a couple meetings planned to look at how we're going to capture that data. If we can capture it on the back end, it'll be great. Um, I just don't know that we absolutely know that right now, and we certainly don't want to we don't want the coach's job to be so much record keeping, as I know you and John and Suzanne and we all are sensitive to that. So maybe we can defer that so we have those, that round of discussion. Yeah, um, I think that there could be some syntax that's written in SCSS to analyze for that, you know, if they had taken, you know, you could code essentially every course that we get out of the student course file from IR as being, is it a CHEO specialty class, is it a pre-CHEO class, or is it a pre-chio class with Nanslow? And there would be some 
some categorization and look up tables around that. But that's that's something that I think we can handle on the back end with I agree with you right now. from our people. And again, like I, I I don't want the coaches to spend you know their however many hours a week that they're working in data collection. Exactly. And and I think that the conversation was not so much around the data collection as around who do we serve. And as we get to who do we serve, that gets to do I keep a record for that student. So the conversation was, as I recall it, and everybody type in it's about your interpretation of it, if it's definitely a student that is going to do a certificate that's aligned with the CHEO grant, then then they would be, um, the career coach would be available to them. If they are in a pre uh, course, pre-required course that's going to lead into CHEO, they would also provide career coaching to that person. However, there are some students that are that are pre, they're in biology and they're not going to go into the CHEO program, but they are experiencing a NANSLO lab. So that's a little twist in there because from NANSLO specific, we can count that student because they're doing a NANSLO lab and it's touched by CHEO dollars. But are they going to consult that student? Well, if they were thinking about going into a CHEO uh, line, yes. If they weren't, if all they're doing is taking a biology course that happens to have a NANSLO lab, we will capture that student number someplace else because we have a requirement for NANSLO to um, serve so many students with new NANSLO experiments. So that is that what some of the other people take are, and does that help in that question? I, I this is Maria, and um, those NANSLO labs that are embedded into bio or chemistry will change that course into a CHEO influenced course, which thereby makes those students um, eligible to receive services if that is um, deemed appropriate between the student and the coach. Now, if the, if the student absolutely knows they're not going to go into allied health in any way or not going to go into a program um, um, identified as CHEO related, then I could see them not interacting with them more than possibly once. But um, you know, they are a potential candidate until you deem that they are not. The big issue, I think, with this particular question will be for Christy and John. And I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't know the coach's name for Flathead. It's Carrie Bolivar. Carrie, okay. So those are the coaches that will um, be just submerged in caseload if we're not careful. So we want to make sure that they have the permission to cut people loose when it makes sense to. So so when you have that indicator that it they are not uh, proceeding with a CHEO associated program, um, then that would be the point where you you would say, no, we got it. But in my mind they would still be they would still show up on this stitch in report somewhere. Because we're capturing all of that information in one place and this is the place. Right. The the thinking that I had, Maria, around that, so if we're looking at this drop withdraw from program or drop details, here in the code book, so we would be looking at that information right here. I see it. I put a code in here for an eligible major. So that could be something that would be able to say that you know you had a student that came in, took an online biology class because it just worked with their schedule, but instead they're going to be you know an automotive technician. They're of interest to the grant, but they're not of interest to the coach. So the coach could essentially throw them out of their report, you know, formally by declaring it here in these two columns. 
and not going through and doing you know the whole thing of deleting the column out. We don't want them to do that. Right. Right. So, 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 so they will make. Here. I'm sorry, Jeremy. So there's initial contact with with every student that is enrolled in a CHEO associated course. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. There's at least one contact of some form for every student. Or or an attempt, you know, through it, right. through you know, email, through postal right. mail, through a, a class visit, what whatever it is. Right. Okay. That's what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if I could, Maria, you know, those types of students, when we think of them as pre chio it's also um, can be thought of as a recruiting pool. Um, not that we would, um, you know, cannibalize or pillage, you know, all of our other programs, but while they're still in that, they're just taking a biology course. They'd like to get into this program if they if they're accepted or they're not sure. It's an opportunity for us to present the benefits of the CHEO influence program. And so in a lot of ways that's a that's a list of potential students as well. I like that. That's a good um, that's a good way to frame it. Okay, so I'm wondering about um, um, rate comfort rate. And I'm wondering if if all of the coaches would weigh in on their rate of comfort around using this tool like if you were to leave this discussion and go use it this afternoon on a scale of one to five with one being low and five being very comfortable, would you type that into the chat box so we can take a look at that? Looking good. So I, my sense is that um, we're scoring. A, a lot of you are, are saying that I'm in the fours somewhere. Um, and so my sense is that um, this has been pretty helpful, and that Jeremy, you know, um, having these conversations every once in a while, going back through and Holding these open discussions on occasion, um, what do you, what do the coaches think about that kind of a thing, where it's um, informal kind of brainstorming? Um, I wanted to interject here, if I could, Maria. This is John. Um, that we also want, I, we think that the next step, probably at this point, is to schedule with those coaches that that would like it to have at least half hour. One-on-one, uh, -on -one because every coach has individual needs at this point. Makes sense. Makes good sense. Yeah, I'm I'm happy to spend 30 minutes, 60, 90, however much each coach needs, so that way you know everybody gets their needs met. Well, you know, for I'm just thinking about my own learning and. Um, I, you know, if I'm somebody that works well with students and understands that coaching piece, and and but I'm not necessarily proficient with Excel, this is a little intimidating. And so I would need some practice, and then would want to come back and talk a little bit about where I ran into trouble and what was that part again, and and have you thought about this kind of thing? So. Um, just something for you all to think about, and uh, Sue, you as well. Um, inter inter um, intermittent check-ins, I guess. Um, what I'm, yeah, what I'm thinking is that they may need a little time not only to absorb what was presented today. I like the idea of one-on-one -on -one to address specific issues. But what we could do is create a survey monkey that we send back out to the group and just, you know, that way they are anonymously kind of responding, uh, what are the issues that you still see? And then we could create another webinar like this to address those topics that they want to cover in relationship to this tool. Um, does that make sense from everybody? If, if it does, please enter something in the chat box. I fully support that.
for those others um, who are participating, I see some are in the chat box. Please post your response in relationship to you know first doing a one on one and then we'll construct a survey monkey. We'll send you the link and then you can give us more feedback as to what are, are the still questions that you have and we'll, we can do another webinar like this. Um, one person posted, when will you send it out? If too soon I won't have more questions. Absolutely not. Um, I'm thinking probably uh, John and Jeremy, when are they going to start using this tool pretty full right on? I know some are already, but do you think in 30 days we need to send a, out a survey? What's what's the pulse on that? Well, um, my my thinking on this is that we would kind of you know do some demonstration around you know what changes we had made in terms of the mechanics of the tool and then send out that updated thing upon the conclusion of this meeting. Now, you know, this this issue came up about this mandated column here on the, the AC column, which I'll get that integrated in both there and into the code book. Right. And and just make sure that it's hundred percent clean and ready to go. And then I've already got an email that's built with all the coaches in it with Here's the file we talked about today. Boom, here it is. Start start using it. Uh, so on and so forth. So I, I would say that I mean coaches, what do you think? I mean, do you need a week, two weeks? I mean thirty days sounds like probably too many. I, I don't actually Jeremy, I, I would want to interject. I think that the coaches, from my point of view, we need a chance to try this this instrument out. Um, and that also probably requires for some people Having that one-on-one -on -one before they can really fly with it. Um, so I would say step one is having just a little more um, instruction for those who need it. Step two is actually trying it, um, breaking it if, if needed, you know, and then coming back and then having an evaluation. So 30 days might be okay, um, but I would my vote would be for a little longer so that we can. I don't think a, a survey monkey is going to yield that much information until we really have a chance to try it out. I agree, John. Jeremy, this is Christy too. And um, are you going to send the new updated ones to IR? Um, I can have Tim there do the repopulating. Okay. I mean, or do you want me? Can I can do that? Do you want me? Do I need to copy and paste what he sent me? Essentially, what he sent you. All of right. the stuff that would be, you know, the the Red Rocks ID numbers and all that student information, you can copy that into the new version. Okay. And it's good to go. Now, what you'll have to do is then take the version that, yeah, you, you'll have everything that you need because all of your headers only changed on the blue and the green sections, okay. which you probably haven't filled out much anyway. Okay. So you might be doing some some translating from the information that you got out since you're. Your communication with the students from the classes, the classes you visited, right? But yeah, the, the the spreadsheet that he gave you is basically dumpable into this new one. Okay, I can do that. But you're going to let them know that there's a new one too, or yeah, I guess it doesn't matter for him. Yeah, because his query is exactly the same. It's how you okay. use that file. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else have any other thoughts or feelings about it? <coughs> Hey Jeremy, um, this is Debbie. Um, what I'm wondering is um, again, just from a pure Excel perspective, um, I I know when I see something demonstrated, I'm a visual learner, so you know the collapsing and you know hiding and collapsing of columns, it it may it may be helpful to the coaches and any Excel user for that matter. A function they don't use that often to just do a short, you know, 30 second little video tutorial and put those up on the website. And then when they're actually sitting with a student or, or data loading and they're like, oh, I know we saw this, but I don't remember how we did that. Um, you just have those kind of little 30, you know, 45 second kind of tutorials might be helpful to folks um, in using this tool to its maximum capacity. Sure. No, I, I think that that's due diligence and that's totally fair. I might lean on some of my more video savvy producers to give me some guidance. I'm looking at you, Maria, around doing doing something that could be just a postable, you know, whatever file format of, you know, how to do this particular thing. Yep. Very smart and very easy. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking so, Camtasia would be a good one because it's pretty one directional, but it's very visual and it's pretty easy to use. There's right. lots of pieces out there. And it's, it's just a matter of doing it. Sure, sure. Not, not a so problem. Maybe, so maybe the coaches can either put in a chat room or send you a follow-up email. You know, some of the, I know that um, you mentioned that this is going to be taped, um, but some of the features that they would just like to have at the ready, you know, and it just could be maybe three or four little functionalities, the copy and paste thing. Um, it, you know, to us that have lived in Excel spreadsheets all the time, it's easy. Every time I do something Excel I haven't done in a while, I'm just, I sit there and just look at the screen a long time. So, right, no, we, don't, we don't want anybody with like, Excel block or anything like that. <laughs> um, I would suggest that the listserv would be a great way to start that dialogue as far as what are some of the quick tools that you know are in Excel that you need just that little refresher on because that way we're not replicating it. Once you send something out and say, oh, show me how you group those columns. As an example, when you do it on listserv, everyone, every career coach is seeing that. And that way another person won't say, oh, well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then you can build that list. So sure, I think that's good too. Yeah, so the listserv that we um, set up for you guys I think would be the perfect way and I can, you know, capture that information and um, and share it. I, I think, Jeremy, you may be on that listserv. If not, we can also put you on it and um, I'll just need to check who's on the listserv. But, you know, that way you can get that information very quickly. Good idea, Sue. Good idea. And, Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. From what I'm um, seeing right now, I'm trying to take some notes too. Uh, we'll send the survey monkey out to everybody in about 30 days. That'll give them some time to do the one-on-ones and actually start using the tool so they have some questions. And then that survey monkey will give us uh, collect information about okay, what are you still having trouble with, so we can frame the next webinar so that it's really addressing those questions that you still have. And the, another action item that I have is to produce videos on the Excel shortcuts. Um, the only piece that's missing right now is where to post them. We could certainly post the links to them up on the Career Coach Wiki so that they have, again, an easy way to find where those links are. And, you know, we could put them on Ning as well, so there's two different locations um, to access that information. And then the third thing is um, to use the listserv to post what are some of those tips that we talked about today or maybe some others as you're using the tool that you would really like a quick video on. So, you know, I'm thinking Camtasia or something like that that's just a, a 30 second or one minute video on here's how you group. So those are the action items I have down. Anything else? Well, yeah, what are what other thoughts are out there? I mean again, I'm kind of the the architect, if you will, of this of this thing, you know, using kind of John as a as a guide. You know, again, let's 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 break this thing. If it's not if it's not gonna do it, we need to know you know, sooner than later so that way any adjustments can happen now and, you know, full support as we move forward. So, Jeremy, uh, we'll add to our action list on the record side. We suggest you distribute um, those variables that are going to be needed for the federal comparison cohort reporting. And then we can make a decision in conjunction with the IR folks. Can we get all that on the back end? Uh, yeah. Marketing with the back end? I think that's good. Um, to, to bring it back to the, the coaches and the immediacy. So, uh, I mean, all of you have gotten an email from me at least one time. Um, I think that going ahead and getting some kind of a schedule with me. I mean, I could very well take an entire day and just do nothing but work with coaches or we can spread it out, kind of peppered throughout the next couple of days. But just get in touch with me when times work for you and we can just get on the phone and both have Excel in front of us and just kind of click about and see what we can get done. Jeremy, this, Jeremy, when are you actually sending out this new iteration? Are you going to send it out right after this webinar? Because I think 
still don't have the new thing except on the uh, webinar page. Sure. What, what we'll do is I'll post it to Basecamp, and then I will direct email it to all coaches, and probably copy the the Rutgers staff, and can copy those those folks over at Wichy. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think right after we close this. Okay, I think to use um, Basecamp is really good because everybody has immediate access, and the thread then is about this versus some other issue. So sure. as long as you include the Rutgers team on that, that would be really terrific. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Basecamp is only used by a more limited population of people. So I would recommend that you use the Chio Wiki, which is accessible to the career coaches. And then we can also send it out on the listserv. Again, it's an easy way to get to everybody at once in a way that they can access it. Because they can't access Basecamp. They can't access the Geo Wiki, which is the PD Works Wiki for them. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's that's really helpful. Um, so then just um, be sure to add um, all of the Rutgers team to that listserv, and that would be great. Yeah, you know, Suzanne, I don't have your personal email, so if you could just send that to me. Sure, no problem, no and, problem. And then I, because it's just geo.pbworks.com, and anybody can go in and look at the information there. Okay, no, but that's really important that I, I thought the coaches all had access to Basecamp, so that's really important. I don't know if all the members of the Rutgers team knew that, so I might be the outlier, but. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. That's just set up for uh, internal communication. Okay, that's so, great. Uh, Thanks. Mm -hmm. Have we covered it all? Is there what, what else do we think in, we we need to address in in this discussion? I'm I'm thinking you know the next thing is if, are there any last comments or questions. I think we've pretty much covered it. I will be sending out the recording link so you can come back into the session and you can view it. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed because you know my track record's been really bad at getting this recording working. But and it's been totally <laughs> user error. But I think this time I got it. So anyway, um, so I will send the link out for this session. So if you guys want to review it again after we're done, uh, it will be available to you. And for those who were not able to participate, again, I'll send it via the listserv so that everybody gets the link. That's awesome. Thank you so much for getting this recording down for us. Are there any other questions that people have? And Jeremy, if you're done with that uh, application sharing, you might want to close that out. Absolutely. Because right now we're still, still seeing that. All right, you should be back to whatever you had up for us. Yeah, just go up to view and um, the whiteboard so that we see the whiteboard now. Thank you. I did not remember that. Okay, thanks a bunch. Um, anyway, so if you um, have any last minute comments or questions, I'm just going to be silent for a second. And if not, after I'm silent, um, if you want to exit this session, you would click on the X in the upper right hand corner of the software. So I'll open it up for any last minute comments. Well, I'll make a comment to, to everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your day. I know that that occurred through a number of uh, people's lunch hours, which is usually you know that noon to one period of time. So thank you so much. I look forward to having those individual conversations to make sure that you're all taken care of. So I mean that. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jeremy. And just a, a last note, I just want to remind everybody that we have a webinar coming up for professional development on the 30th, and that is Karen James Chopra. She is a career coach out of Washington, D.C. Uh, she's a nationally recognized career coach as well as on the speaker circuit. So I'm looking forward to having you guys participate in that webinar. And for information, again, we'll follow um, about the link to use for that webinar and time and all that. But I've sent out the initial um, information just so you can book it down on your calendars. So 
Rachel, thank you so much for joining today. And if no other questions or comments are uh, needed, then we're going to exit the session. Thanks so much, everybody. Nice work. Nice work. Thanks a lot. Thank you all.